Greetings. Welcome back, my dear friends, to All Quiet in the Trenches. Now, we're engaging in warfare. The enemy has superior numbers. We must soon have to retreat from these trenches. Heron to officer, you and your greenhorns are to collect and evacuate all the ammunition you can find. If we'll lose this trench, at least we won't lose our equipment. Okay. Right into it. Um, slight thing. I did have to restart. It's fine. It'll be good. Because I've made all the same choices. Slightly different things happened, like I didn't have Nightwatch to deal with. Anyway soldier that I tried to rescue still died, but here we go. In battle, you lead your soldiers as a troop. However, you can also give them orders individually unless they've been separated from the troop. Pay attention to your allied and enemy troops and adjust your tactics accordingly. On each troop, information about it is displayed, such as its stats or its last command. When you click on a character, a window with more details appears on the right. Under the portrait is the current morale. High morale tends to lead to positive incidents. Low morale tends to lead to negative ones. The values below show current circumstances, abilities, personality, and attitude of the character. They can influence the morale. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Now. Under moderate fire, moderate cover find equipment. Does anybody have any relevant abilities? Oh! Cummerbund is attentive. Okay, well Lineker can search as well. Okay! <coughs> give your troop one command per turn. The rally command causes your troop to stay at its current position. Fair enough. With the following commands you can move your troop to another position, advance tactical movement to retreat. Often a new command also changes the project, current project of your troop. Okay. First off, Lineker. I was able to find some ammunition. Excellent work, Cumberbund. I was also able to find some ammunition. to very low danger and collect ammunition and equipment. That seems like a smart location. Okay. Robert. You attentive son of a gun. What did you find? More ammunition! Excellent! Good work! How about this way? This is going swimmingly! So far... Heads down, artillery. Okay. 
come about. Keep searching. What did you find, son? More ammunition. Lieutenant von Karsbrook must be impressed with the amount of ammunition we've managed to collect so far, I'm sure. Okay, commands are executed by the soldiers on the spot. Hold, suppress, rally. Changing the command also changes the current approach. Okay, okay. Soldiers, we're falling back. Retreat to the next defensive line. Um, yes, I shall. Then I can. Down to Officer, we should provide cover fire so our comrades can retreat. And go. Oh, we've completed collect ammunition and equipment. Down to Officer, this should be enough, right? We've collected a lot, quite a lot now and can't carry much more. Okay, well, Cumberbund can still do his thing. Well, while the rest of you provide general suppressing fire. Okay. Still a bit of ammunition and first aid supplies here. I took everything I could find. Good lad. this way. Oh no! Cummerbund's been blown up! Damn artillery! Cumberpunt must have taken a hit! Well, you know, since you noticed it... You can deal with it. Yeah, Lineker can cover barbed wire. Don't suppose it really matters who does that. As long as one of them does. Okay. Done. I've cut a path through the barbed wire. Excellent. Done. Cumberbund's bleeding is almost stopped. The elder officer, I won't need much longer. Leave. Well. <laughs> Corpses in the area. That's unfortunate. Come about are you going to get up? Lad? Oh shit, I moved them there. <laughs> Oops, I didn't actually mean to do that. Oh well. They're all there anyway. The artillery I almost got hit. That was far too close. It's a miracle that no one is seriously injured. Tell that to Cumberbund's leg! To the next level!
and there we go. Saturday, March 6th, 1915. The explosions, gunshots and screams still echoed in my ears. We had only been fighting for a few minutes and yet it felt as if years had passed since this morning, since the everyday life back home a lifetime away. To be in the camp now, safely beha far behind the front, was surreal. The light-hearted chirping of the birds was almost drowned out, almost drowned out the dull rumble of the front and the cries of pain from the field hospital where we had taken Cumberbund. My people lay down exhausted on the grass, surrounded by the boxes of ammunition and equipment we had saved. Dirty and bloodied, some still pale and trembling. But soon the angry voice of the lieutenant in the distance abruptly broke the supposed peace. Even before we could see him coming towards us amidst the tents, on your feet, man. I ordered and motioned my men to stand at attention. Lieutenant von Karsbrook looks satisfied. Oh, he's at four bars. That is satisfied. Seeing the ample supply of ammunition seemed to further soothe his morose mood. Good job, Herr uh, 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 Unter Officer. He forced out against his visibly blazing anger. Not that it was a difficult task, but apparently with this bunch of slobs you have to be happy if anyone shows even, even a modicum of competency. Our troops were in the best position for a counter-attack, but now the reserve was too cowardly to take advantage of this unique opportunity we had prepared for them. The lieutenant rumbled without prompting, and now the Herr Major accuses me, us, of having abandoned the trench line unnecessarily. A disgrace. Henceforth, we will hold the line, come what may. Ah, uh, Herr Leutnant, there was no holding that line. I interjected. The attack was too strong. The previous artillery... The Leutnant interrupted me harshly. That's hardly for your place to judge. We could have sold the trenches for considerably more today, and if that is what the Air Major expects to grant my prince in promotion to Overlightment, then that is what he will get. Set up camp, Aunt Officer. Sooner or later, we we'll get our chance to pay back the French, he ordered, and left us to take out his displeasure on others. Okay. So Cumberbunds in the field hospital. These three lads need to set up camp. And is it... I don't know. Let's go to the hospital. Speak with Cummerbunt. No, Cummerbunt doesn't want to talk. But Nurse Elizabeth does. Dialogues are an important element of the game. Symbols on the side provide information about effects. Star symbol means that this dialogue is available due to certain circumstances and could be gone in the next turn. Okay. And, of course, they can have negative effects. Cool. I'll go away. Oh, your cover buttons on, Officer. I'm Sister Elizabeth Ritter. I organize a small field hospital here. Don't worry, Cumberbund is doing pretty well. He will soon recover from his wound. I'm honestly glad you were overwhelmed so quickly. The shorter a skirmish, the fewer dead and wounded. The feet is good. Better than the hands. No. As far as I'm concerned, certainly yes. 
Lerdman can throw a fit about losing the trench line all he wants, but I'm content with not being overburdened. And nobody dying under my care, just because we don't have enough time for proper treatment. Yeah, I can agree with that. I'm glad you see it that way, too. There are some people in this camp who believe that the war will be decided right here. Complete nonsense. So you want fame and glory? <sighs> As a nurse, I know, there's only agony and death to be won here. So that's Nurse Elizabeth. Now, what else have we? Field Kitchen. Field Cook Zelinski. Welcome to the camp and to Officer. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm Anton Zelinski, your field cook. I'm afraid I can't cook anything for you right now, though, as your squad hasn't been allocated supplies yet. Better contact Feld Intendant Hennick. He is responsible for your supplies. Feld Intendant Hennick, is it? Where the hell is Feld Intendant Hennick? Ah, he must be in headquarters. Logistics Officer Hennick. Ah, uh, yours. The new group's under officer, right? Feld Intendant Hennick, responsible for supplying the troops. I'll allocate some supplies to your group immediately. This should last you until the next supply shipment. Talk to me if you need anything. Here's to good cooperation, Air Onto Officer. Next shipment? It'll be a few more weeks, but the next shipment of supplies is coming soon. Okay. Is there anything we can do to help? I don't have anything I'd need your men for, Herr Anto Officer. Why do, don't you ask Herr Leutnant? I'm sure he'll find something for them to do. Um, I won't, because he doesn't have an exclamation mark above his head. I'll click on him. What is it now? You know that I'm a busy man, Herr Anto Officer. I can ask for more work. So why not? There's always something to do. If you order some of your men to help dig trenches, I'll take positive note. The more you can spare, the better. Um... Okay. Very diligent, Count Officer. That's what I want to see from all my subordinates. Yes, okay. Um... Ah, wonderful. I just got this delivery from the Feld Intendant. What size ration should I give your people? If you want to do something good for them, then I would suggest double rations. You just talk to me whenever you want to change your troops' rations. Yeah, we'll be nice to the men. We'll double their rations. Alright, Aunt Officer. Serves the next. Oh, serves the men double rations from now on. Okay, now, help digging trenches. Um, who's the least? Well, obviously, I can't make Kamabun to do it. Okay. Yeah, Khan can do it because he's optimistic as well as physically fit. There we go. Now we've at least got two of them. It's 
setting up camp, one digging trenches, and come up onto recovering. Sunday, March 7th, 1915. Mold everywhere, Zelinsky commented as he held out an exemplary loaf of bread covered in green stains from to me. We'd have to throw it away. I lowered my gaze anxiously to the baskets of baked goods at his feet. As the warehouse was still well stocked, it was a moment. Save what can be saved. I urged Zelinsky. Cut a vase of mold, we'll keep the rest. Zelinsky was horrified. But her own officers, that's dangerous, I can't condone it. My order, my responsibility. It isn't really all that dangerous, it turns out. This is before we knew about penicillin. My order, my responsibility, I looked at him prompting him to follow my orders. He looked disgustedly at the loaf of bread in his hand for a moment, but then nodded reluctantly and set to work. That was a long time between journal entries. Thursday, March 18th, 1915. The soldier Linica was small but sturdy, and evidently didn't mind doing whatever needed doing. He took on even the most unpleasant tasks without complaint. Sov and help was needed somewhere and lent a hand. One morning I saw Linico working on a task that I was sure I had assigned to Lutz. I approached him. Next time talk to me beforehand. Before you take over your comrade's tasks, I said. Linica paused. I'm sorry. I just wanted to help as the task seemed too difficult for him. Please leave that decision up to me. He has to learn, and you won't, be al won't always be able to help him in battle. Lineker nodded. I suppose you're right. After a brief silence, he added, We have it good here. Everyone has something to eat, and we have warm clothes. Our families back home are much worse off. That sucks. We spoke briefly about the families at home and the duties here at the front before I moved on. The soldier had obviously seen a lot. Alrighty. <coughs> okay. I'm going to end this episode here. For now, farewell. I will return very shortly.